today I have been asked to make sauerkraut. Here's the supplies that you're going to need. I have with me today some coleslaw. Uh, it measures four cups, pre-cut. Uh, I like this because it's no fuss, no muss. Um, some Himalayan salt. A bowl to mix the Himalayan salt and the coleslaw in. A container that I'm going to put my coleslaw in after I've prepped it and created a brine. I'm going to use this container here which is weighted with little rocks for the weight to keep the cabbage down in the brine which is very important and there's a couple of different ways to fix the top so that the bugs don't get into the brine there's cheesecloth or a coffee filter works you'll need an elastic band and oh yeah a pair of gloves if you're using colored cabbage like I am you're going to want a pair of gloves because that red cabbage is going to leach its red into my hands so here we go into a bowl the coleslaw and I might add this coleslaw what is um, a little outdated it's actually perfect for making uh, the brine. So seeing as I only have four cups of cabbage, I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of Himalayan salt. Put my gloves on. And now I'm going to massage my cabbage. By massaging the cabbage, it's going to take the moisture out of the cabbage and create its own brine. So you just keep going and going and going. I'll come back after I've done this. It's So we started with uh, four cups of cabbage. And if this is done right, it's going to come down to approximately two cups of cabbage look at that you can already see how it's getting smaller and and uh, I can make it drip I don't know can you see that let me see if I could turn my hand sideways look at that that's that's the salt pulling out and creating the brine. I don't know if you can see it but there's an awful lot of fluid in there and that's from just massaging the cabbage with the Himalayan salt and the, the natural juices come out of the cabbage. In this one, there's a lot of carrot, which is, I find tasty. And I think that I'm gonna change the size of my container. The container I'm gonna use is virtually the same kind of jar as I was proposing, but I'm going with a smaller, shorter one because obviously I don't have very much cabbage. So now I'm going to put the cabbage and the brine into my container. And I, I originally learned how to uh, do this with a crock pot, but I like the glass because I can see what's going on. And part of the fermentation process is air bubbles. And you want to keep those air bubbles moving. So uh, each day you babysit it. I call it babysitting. I babysit my My sauerkraut so now I'm going to take my container of weight and I'm going to push down 
so that the brine is above the cabbage. That is a key point. The brine must be above the cabbage at all times. And at this point, I'm gonna do a slow push to get the all the air out of the cabbage. And then I'm going to take my coffee filter and my elastic band. And I'm going to place this jar in a warm spot. Tomorrow I will check it. First, I will take the coffee filter off and the elastic, of course. And then I will push it down again like I just did and push all the air out and then put it back together and do this for six or seven days in a row. And then voila, I will have sauerkraut.